In one of the most remote parts of Kenya live the Samburu people. Living in isolation from the modern world has allowed this nomadic tribe to go virtually untouched for hundreds of years. Each Samburu clan is governed by a small group of elders, men who make all the decisions to ensure the continuation of their age-old traditions. But they are now facing new modern world problems, like climate change, which threatens their livelihood as pastoralists. They are also starting to become aware of women's rights issues. Samburu women live hard lives of physical labor, and on top of that, are subjected to the controversial tradition of female circumcision. While the elders have not fully addressed these problems, the next generation is trying to bring change. We travel to Samburu land to meet with a junior elder who is trying to find ways to introduce new ideas to the tribe and phase out some of their harmful practices. Even though the Western modern culture is coming in, the change has to come from the community. It's them has to accept it. This is Alex, a Samburu activist trying to better the lives of his people. He's trained in managing environmental resources, but in reality, his work extends far beyond into the health and empowerment of his community as a whole. Due to environmental changes, the Samburu have started to lose their pasture lands. The main challenge Samburu people are facing right now is the drought. Drought is, is like a big, big threat because it's affecting their livestock. Alex is currently working with a local land preservation organization, the Westgate Conservancy, to revitalize Samburu pasture lands. Recently, they implemented a planned grazing program for Samburu livestock. Livestock are not just graze everywhere. They should have a, a structure management of it. When grazing is organized, nature has time to replenish the pasture lands. And with land management, proper settlement patterns, they have actually managed to overcome the threat of overgrazing. Introducing new techniques is not easy in this area, and as a university-trained environmentalist, Alex is balancing between Samburu culture and the scientific world. When we introduce about holistic management, people thought like, you're being stupid. You cannot change the balance. It's only God to make the changes. We told them, just give us one year, and after that one year, they couldn't believe what they saw. The success of Alex's environmental initiatives has earned him the respect of his elders and enabled him to suggest even more ways to help the community, in particular, Samburu women. Alex invites us to his village so we can get a deeper understanding of what life is like for Samburu women. Samburu women are responsible for household work, child rearing, and they even construct the villages. So women do everything around here. Yeah. Including constructing their own homes. Including <laughs> constructing their own houses. One of the hardships the Samburu are dealing with is poor access to health care. While it affects the whole population, women are struck hardest as they bear a large amount of children with no break from hard labor. Samburu people still have to walk miles to get to the dispensaries. It forced the, the, the local women to give birth in, in the village. They undergo actually a lot of um, problems. Alex introduces us to Rebecca, a Samburu midwife, who tells us about their birthing practices. Rebecca shares some of the traditional techniques used during delivery. <sighs> oh my god. Okay. This um, sounds like it's very <laughs> loaded. I, I don't even know about it. In case that um, it, the placenta is taking some delays, then you you coil your, your bead like that, yeah, and put it on our stomach. Then it forces the placenta to go out. Like wow. That. Yeah. Being lady, you, they, they practice, they tell you that, and they, they sometimes they can show you because ladies are allowed to see. But not the men. Not the men me. are always not around. <laughs> 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 Have there ever been any uh, incidents that she's been a part of where either the mother has passed or the child? Yeah, there's been some incidents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 As we were preparing for our interview with the clinic's nurse, Andrew, a local Samburu woman walked in. Evelyn, who was seven months pregnant, barely managed to make it in from her nearby village. She is suffering from severe lower back and stomach pains. Just, uh, I didn't feel some uh, problem. 
but not yet confirmed because I don't have the laboratory. Uh, I don't have explanation. Uh, it could be like a, a, the coach. The only thing Andrew can do is give her antibiotics without a proper diagnosis. Evelyn remains in pain and doesn't know what is wrong with her baby. Can you ask her what her plan is to do? Dada, na ide paga na ngun 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 She doesn't know. Andrew tells us that the nearest properly equipped hospital is 20 kilometers away. But like most people in the area, Evelyn doesn't have any mode of transportation. If we were able to arrange transport right now to take her to um, this place that's 20 kilometers away, is she willing to come with us? Uh -huh. We popped in our car. We're taking Evelyn uh, right now to get looked after at a better uh, hospital. It takes 40 minutes for us to drive to the hospital in our off-road vehicle. There is no way Evelyn would have made the trip had we not happened to be there. So, so what is? Did you check her out? What what, what is her condition? The location of the shaft, the line of the shaft is okay. Also, that pain. That's me. So you gave her an injection? Yeah, I've given her an injection, mm -hmm. a positive injection. Even though we could see that Evelyn was still in pain, we had to have faith in the doctor and follow his orders to leave her so that she could rest. This is Evelyn's room right here. She's sleeping. She was seen by a nurse um, who says there's no reason to worry. She's not bleeding, um, but he has put her on bed rest for two days. This just goes to show you the, the level of access for uh, women that live in this type of isolation uh, here in this community, so. Our time in Samburu exposed us to the hardships women face. Alex tells us about an additional complication the women are dealing with when it comes to childbirth. Female genital mutilation, FGM. FGM is the practice of removing any parts of the external female genitalia. It's a cultural practice that is done for non-medical reasons. Even though it's illegal in Kenya, it largely goes undetected in Samburu land due to the region's remote location. We got some tribes which they don't do circumcision. Like they can give birth today and tomorrow she's which is normal, but I've seen some Buru women when they give birth, they can spend like one to two weeks just not even moving. We wanted to find out more about this complex issue. After a few days of trying, Alex managed to arrange a sit down with the elders of the community. He warned us that FGM is a very sensitive subject and would have to be approached with tact, especially as an outsider. So why is female circumcision so important to Samburu people? Never. Uh, with men, yes, when a baby is very young, um, and if it's done older, they're they're given medicine to not feel the pain. Despite being against female circumcision, as a junior elder and active member of the community, Alex has to work within the tribe system to try and make women's lives easier. It's a very difficult path to navigate. Alex realized he could use his environmental work to empower women in a way the tribe can accept. He decided to employ women to work with the program. This would not only aid him with improving the land, but also improve the women's financial situation. 
If Simbru women make their own money, over time, they will become equals within the community. Alex recruited women to clear the land of acacia trees. Compared to their long-term project of planned grazing, clearing the land of acacia trees is a more immediate solution for saving pasture lands. Acacia reflection has actually covered like 70 to 80 percent of the, of the land. And the, all the places covered with acacia reflections are associated with bare grounds. Alex takes us to see an area where acacia have been cleared. We cleared all that area and it can walk like one kilometer further down and you can see more cleared area. When you get rid of uh, acacia trees, how does that make the land more productive? When you cut out acacia reflection, you lay all the branches on the ground and we put seed inside those branches because uh, seeds actually grow very well because they've got a small shed and the, the, it also prevents water from running off. So it just prevents the soil from being eroded. The project has yielded some wonderful results that can be observed during the rainy season. The whole place turned into, into a very productive land. The grass that you planted shoot, but also the indigenous um, perennial grass that are lost before came back because the land is very healthy now. And as a result of more grass being grown here, what does that mean for the community? Our livestock, which is very, very important. Actually, it's the number one economic, um, economic um, resources we have. We wanted a healthy land, healthy grassland for our desirable uh, our livelihoods. What started as a conservation project also began to have a positive effect on the local women, who are able to make their own income by clearing land and harvesting acacia seeds. We pay them 100, 800 shillings per bag. Mm -hmm. but I can remember a lady pocketing about 24,000 Kenyan shillings. That's wow. enough to buy a car. Being employed has given women the kind of power they never had before. Alex introduces us to women who work for the project. And as women doing this work, being able to be employed, to have their own money, to spend it the way that they want to, uh, do they feel empowered? <laughs> when I, my husband won't be rude to me like the way he used to be. Used to <laughs> so That's a thumbs up. We, we got a communication being soft, you know. <laughs> After meeting with different members of the tribe, we could see that changing old traditions would have to come from inside their culture. Little by little, exposure to education, as well as women having their own money, would make the lives of Samburu women better. No matter how slow that change might be, the younger generations, both men and women, would be the vehicles of it. I've always been siding women in my community. Sometimes other men they can say you are pro woman or whatever. When I used to be a young boy going to school, it everything used to be my mom. Like even buying a pencil, a small pencil, it's my mom. Buying books, it's my mom. So when women in my village start to engage into those activities that used to bring a little income to a woman, I've always been in the forefront to, to help them. It's always in my heart, like, empowering a woman is empowering the whole Samburu community, society. Yeah.